Hi there. Give me a little bit of a second. I'm not sure if this is on to check the uh, tech. I'm not sure if I'm working. <laughs> I've done this before. I'm not sure if we're I'm there. Sure if I'm working. It does say we're live. I've done this before. Yes, I I'm can hear sure myself. One second while I work out how to mute myself. Right there, I think. Yes. All right. There we go. <laughs> uh, welcome to this masterclass topic on the universal perspective of fear. My name's Craig. I have the. Um, 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 I've got a mind blank. I have the passage within the multi author book called enlightened uh, so i feel like i need to address a couple of things first off before we even get started in into the topic because the way that i approach uh these topics um come from my life experience of uh living with the, the highest uh levels of love and light that's not a term I use, I use love and life, um, that I know to be true within myself as it has evolved through uh, physical experience. So um, where do I start at the start? So I've done a lot of writing work. Um, as the last uh, presenter, Tash Ashwin, uh, founder and CEO of Ashwin Publishing. Yay! The one that puts all this together for us. She, she's done an amazing job. Um, I've done a lot of writing and as she um, um, presents in, in a way that, you know, writing can be really uh, healing and transformative. Uh, I have to stick my hand up at this point and say, I never intended to be a writer. I never intended to write any books. Um, yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> I usually keep keep my things um, very quiet um, until the manifestation is actually happening because I like to uh, follow universal guidance and this is what my entire life is about. This is what the next book that my next singular book through Ashwin Publishing, not the multi-author one that was announced just a little while ago. Uh, Alchemy of the Soul's Journey is my next full book coming out through Ashwin Publishing. And that is a culmination of the lessons that I've learned throughout my life, uh, the hard way, <laughs> uh, how to manifest and I also even originally started off as an atheist. So um, writing can be exceptionally transformational. That's, that's the first part of the message. Um, what I've got uh, in, the, um, in the throes, and I'm not sure where the universe will, will actually take me with, with this thing because even as we come into this uh, container that is the launch um, and promotional products uh, time for the product for each and every little um, author that we got out there, um, such such an amazing transformation and, and uplift and boost. And thank you to everyone that made that happen. 
So that's it. everyone that's uh, the author, the co-authors with me, um, their family and support team, and anyone that, that purchased the, the uh, paperbacks are now out <laughs> and purchased the, the e-book that got us all the cat categories. And thank you again to Tash for, you know, the strategy mastermind that put it all together. Um, so back on topic with the, the transformational aspect of writing. Um, just quickly, I've got tons of other stuff. Now, I'm not sure if it's ever going to um, come out. But as I mentioned, I never considered myself a writer. Writing is a really good, powerful, transformational tool. And it tips into the topic that I've got at the moment is um, the universal perspective of fear and how to overcome it. I used writing and it came to me um, innately through poetry. I, I just started writing and they, it rhymed and it just, just evolved that way. So um, I tested my skills in poetry and I was a finalist in the International Society of Poets, but I had to travel to the US and read my stuff aloud. Just wasn't going there, wasn't doing that. <laughs> uh, especially as a, a young, young, tough male that was um, in the military at the time. Just wasn't going to happen. Um, but yes, um, that's that's how transformational it can be. And I just like to give people out there just a little little thing of hope. Um, the topic I'm speaking on, the universe perspective of fear, is not the way that I like to approach things. But uh, I felt for the um, time and container that we in that it was more. Uh, relevant to speak to that standpoint first. Um, so it's, we're not going to go deep and dark and we're not going to um, go into why it's necessary. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll glance over most of those topics. What I want to give you is um, real life skills and tools to take away and use my way of um, purveying information because it, it's different. So what I'd like to do uh, with everyone is I believe in free will and choice, most of all and above all. I think it's the universal rule. So what I like to do when I'm helping people is I like to talk in uh analogy so i'll make this little bubble and I'll, I'll put it up here and i'll talk around into the rules of that and then i'll draw the line from where we are to what that is um so you'll just have to bear with me um if you're a fan of the simpsons it'll be a little bit like an abe simpson moment <laughs> where i go, go off on a little bit of a story uh, that's my process. And the reason why that's my process is because I want everyone who picks up this information to choose for themselves to see if it resonates, number one, free will, free will of choice. But then to use their own relative experience to see how that uh, interplays, how that information interplays with your real life situation. And from there, we, we can dig in a little bit deeper and pull out the microscope and have a, have a closer look. And we can find little ways in which to um, evolve that state of consciousness wherever you're at. And I guess it's at this point I'd like to mention um, the framework in which I speak with is uh, one that is uh, we are all guided. We all ha have our spiritual team available. They're, they're with us constantly. They're trying to show us the way 
always, they've never give, given up and they never will. It is, it is literally their job to be there and support us. Um, so if you're here watching this, then yep, thank you <laughs> and congratulations. You'll, you'll um, pick up some little uh, nuggets um, but, and see if it fits within your um, life experience and um, you'll see. I, I need to get into it um, and then you'll see. So where I'd like to start, fear is a story that we tell ourselves based on the perception or the insertion of a thought form from an external source. Um, fear cannot interrupt or come into our lives in any way, shape or form unless there is some allowance that we accept within our own psyche or con construct. And the tricky thing is no one's talking about this. No one understands this. We, um, it's harder to understand in a, in a, in a 3D dimension or, or density that um, we all have the, the free will of choice. But what does that mean? Uh, choice is available every single day like multiple times every single day we could we can choose literally from the second that we wake up out of our bed to get out of bed or not <laughs> and whether or not it's a work day you know cause and effect follows but um the, what i'm speaking to at this point is like energetic boundaries um that's probably a label that a lot of people would um put within this framework it's, it's a little bit more than that so um, if we have the energetic boundaries then obviously fear is, is not not as successful but for some reason fear always just keeps like creeping in somehow some way and it's our job to understand what's going on in our own lives and find ways to evolve from that and, and, and in a sense, break three. Um, it's not necessarily within that analogy of breaking free, it's more like standing strong. Um, so, um, or I should mention, I will get to uh, comments shortly I, I can't multitask even as i'm speaking um like my guidance is usually um throwing this thing in there and that thing in there and it was, it's saying actually get to the point of the the analogy but i needed just to address the facebook thing um i can't multitask i'm on my own <laughs> um so where i'd like to take us and um just putting a little bit of a rule onto what it is we're, we're, we're about to do. Please understand that it's only a thought form experiment. Um, we're going to play uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario, basically. And, and it's just to place that framework um, so that you can insert your own life experience within the uh, thought form of the framework and how it works through uh, universal guidance and your angels being on your side and you know eliciting that information that's raising those flags in those moments to tell you to have a look at will be um mm. I skipped a bit so, so it's a little bit like seed planting so i plant these seeds within this instance and then um something will happen within your life and um just because you've been here shown up and you've understood a little concept what you'll see within that moment was maybe a tiny little flash of 
you know, someone said this once upon a time. And then it's up to your job. Uh, it's up to you to see if that's relevant, how it's relevant, what's going on. Um, I need to glance over that, that little section because I'd like to go deeper, but don't have time. Um, so we'll get back to um, not letting fear into your inner sanctum. Now, that, that's going to be a difficult thing to do. So I'd like um, everyone to actually, just, just before I go there, they're, they're telling me again. Um, so if everything has a polarity, um, like light has dark, you wouldn't know the light if you didn't know the dark. You wouldn't know the darkness if there wasn't light. You know, everything has a polarity. Um, this is a rhetorical question for you to answer. And I just want you to take notice of the first thing that comes to your mind when I say this is if fear has a nemesis, an opposite or an enemy, what is it for you? There, there are a few different ways that um, anyone could answer this. Um, each way, your initial thought is perfect. Um, there is information within that, that little thing for you to uh, look into, to go deeper into and, and, and to find. So back to the inner sanctum. <laughs> um, I'd like you to take this little um, thought form experiment. It's like a visionary um, thing. So you don't need to close your eyes, but imagine that um, you're in a house and that is your house. It could be any, any kind of house. It could be whatever it is, um, big, small, cozy, comfortable, um, luxurious, it really doesn't matter. But the, the analogy of this house as your inner sanctum is that no one's allowed in here. This is your own private place. This is the, the uncrackable uh, place that we want to have within our own existence. And within this analogy, as we're talking about the topic of fear, um, fear would represent the uh, wind or like a storm that's happening outside. Um, so that's, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting too much information. I'm sorry. Um, I've got to slow it down. Um, so there's like a tornado of fear and wind happening outside and um, it's blowing over uh, doors and windows are, are cracking open. The, the wind of the fear is uh, leaking in either in little ways or in, in major ways. And it's messing up your little inner sanctum at home. Uh, it can get so bad in, in within the, the analogy that maybe that there's a tornado outside and it uh, literally kicks the, um, the kitchen door open and knocks over the fridge. <laughs> Not the fridge, <laughs> please, not the fridge. Um, it's a little bit too far, but um, that's the like kind of the, the worst case scenario within the analogy. Uh, what we obviously need to do is to find ways in which we can um, like close the windows, close the doors. Um, so that's that's our inner sanctum. Now we've got a little bit more to add to, add to this now. Um, all your loved ones are in the backyard or the yard space of this house. They're out there, they're having a barbecue, they're nice and safe, they're nice and loved. Um, how are you presenting yourself with this? This is another little, little uh, thought experiment. How are you um, presenting yourself to them uh, at this current stage. So the best case in that uh, analogy within the situation is all the doors and windows are closed, the, 
be um, it could be blowing a gale out there, but you can walk into the backyard and listen to the troubles of of others. There, there are a lot of people that can hold this kind of um, space for others. There are some that can't. Um, the result doesn't necessarily matter. It is only ever ever the journey. So. Um, how are we showing up? And do you see if it would be valuable to be able to lessen the effect of the wind getting into your inner sanctum to mess it up before proceeding outside to interact with those people that you love? Um, fairly, fairly obvious answer. So if, you, if your doors and windows are kicked kicked in with the wind and, and you're going outside, you're not gonna be able to um, stand there in a space of love um, or we could, but not within your um, highest capacity of where you could be. Uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, now, um, you got, out, got to understand that every single person that's in your little backyard has their own house and in, in a sanctum within this thought um, process and an analogy. So, um, but we, we can only focus on and we can only change ourselves. And if you have the capacity to uh, elicit change for someone else, it's, it's a spiritual no-no. <laughs> please, please don't do that. Um, you, uh, even if you're doing it for a, loving um, loving perspective, what you could be doing and potentially are doing is taking away from uh, their chance to learn a universal lesson that will help them uh, find the tools that they need to be a stronger person themselves. Um, all right, so we're gonna step away the, from the analogy of the inner sanctum for a second and, and insert a slightly different variation because we, we don't want no cyclone coming into the backyard of our people and, and sending them off to um, <laughs> like Dorothy to the Wizard of Oz, you know, chasing a little fluffy white rabbit. Um, so let, let's change that analogy a little. So within the backyard is all the people that you love. Now, the inner sanctum re uh, represents your inner self and, and what you can and can't do within your own context of your own um, insight into your in, uh, inner self. The backyard uh, analogy is how you're presenting yourself to an external source and to the ones you love, because it doesn't include anyone else in this thought form experiment, except for the ones you love. They're gonna come in soon, <laughs> but we'll do it nice and friendly first. Um, so everyone's in the backyard that you love. They're having a great time. There's barbecue, um, you're at your peak, you're presenting, yourself in such uh, love and grace uh, to be the best possible version that you could be. And they're here to support you in similar ways. Um, that's the that's best case scenario. Fear uh, within this analogy would be like people on the other side of that, that fence, um, we've got a nice tight energetic boundaries. So the fence is high and we can hear them out there, but we can't hear what they say. Um, that's, that's their healthy perspective. Um, as that energetic boundary as such uh, falls away a little bit, maybe their voices come up a little bit. Maybe the fence comes down a little bit. Um, I will go, uh, uh, we're getting to this bit, but I'll go, go a slightly different way. Um, now, 
um, let's just say that that's not quite the perfect life that we have, um, because no life's perfect. We're, we're just doing a thought form experiment to see how it, how it fits within your world to see, uh, help you dig into the real life events and perspective of not only yourself as an inner work, but the people around you. And this is where the next part comes in. It's one of, one of the people that you love and cherish in your own backyard has issues. And they have issues in their life in the form of um, another person we'll use in the analogy because we've got, we've got the, the fence and, and they they represent fear and they've um, like jump fence and they're shadowing this person and you, you don't want them in your backyard um, because you know what's going on. You know that they're upsetting your friend that you love um, in you know, whatever manner this is. Now, um, I'll just take a, take a quick second um, to jump in because um, I'm being told to put my counselling hat on <laughs> as a, as a counselling student um, and say, if, if this is representing something that's happening quite a lot within your a life, like there's lots of people jumping the fence and there's lots of people upsetting the people in your life, um, please feel free to... Um, get some professional counselling help. And what, what a lot of people don't realise is there's even some uh, free services that, out, that are out there. Um, as counselling students, as um, anything in the mental health uh, field, uh, we all go through um, a, a stage where we've got to get some like real life ex uh, physical experience so there's some free versions out there but what you need to realize is we get what you pay for um we could be students or we could be actually finished our uh certain degrees and um you don't know what you're going to get but within the whole context of, of what i'm trying to say here it's safe it's there is even some free versions and what a lot of people don't realize is the the level of the mental health out there so counselors are the people like myself who who you like to sit across from and have a little bit of a chat about life and um you know what might be going on social workers generally work with uh groups of people but can do counselling things. Um, the next step up from uh, counselling would be uh, psychology. And psychology kind of bridges the gaps between uh, the counsellor and the psychiatrist. Um, that they are generally more um, academically trained but it is their job to be that middleman. So maybe they're not quite as effective counsellors, but I'm not saying that they can't be. Um, and then you have psychiatrist, and it's a psychiatrist's job to uh, work on what's going on with your life and how do we help this individual with the brain chemistry, the chemicals that, uh, the brain releases because the person's in trauma. How do we help them regulate their body? Um, and our psychiatrist could be potentially a really good counsellor too. This, this, but that's that's kind of levels and how's that? And that's just the um, uh, what do you call that? Disclosure, I guess, to say. Uh, don't be afraid to go and seek help if, if you really need to um, from the, the professional people. Um, if you think you can do it yourself, then good. So we'll, we'll jump back into um, someone's jumped the fence and they're upsetting the person you love. <laughs> um, 
Now you need to know and understand at this point that it is not your position as much as you love them to um, tell them the ways that in which they're making a mistake or, or highlight the aspects of fear that are present that are causing discomfort or disease within your loved one's life. Uh, that too would be a universal lesson for them to, to go through and process. And it's vitally important from the things that I've learned along my journey of making so many mistakes is that that is considered universal interference. And you will cop uh, something in retaliation for that. And um, a personal example, without naming names or, or going into situations, is constantly holding the hand of someone that's, that's trying to evolve and, and level up within themselves. And this is, this is a place we all come to. This is a learning experience. Um, so it's not necessarily bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying this could be an experience for you. Um, someone that you're constantly holding, they'll become codependent on you for the services that you provide, but they're not learning the, the little uh, innate tools that is in alignment with the analogy of their own little sanctum to learn how to close their door. They're asking you to come step into their house and close the door, close the windows. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave it, <laughs> leave that little analogy right there. And obviously um, that little example of people that, that are potentially jumping the fence and um, coming into the backyard of your loved ones um, and upsetting their life, which, which is in fact upsetting your life. Uh, just know that you can always be there to support them in, in the best loving way um, that allows them their free will of choice, even if it's, it's the worst way, like they're, they're making a serious mistake. Um, you can help guide them to counseling. Um, but there's so many things you can do you can put this framework into your life and, and, and see how it actually fits. Um, that phone never rings. I hope you can't hear that. We're just gonna have to put up with that. I've got my phone on, on mute, but... <laughs> um, um, so let's go with um, what, the, what the personal effects with of um, finding your own little way to make the, the tiny little improvements within your own little life, your inner sanctum, to, to finally find ways in which to um, shore up those defenses that within the analogy closes the windows and doors. Um, if you can do that just on your own level, then what the benefit will be for you is obviously a greater sense of peace. You'll be able to see outside that there's um, storms going on and to be able to um, something's funny going on with the internet. Um, see what's going on um, outside and be able to hold, hold that space within yourself, which means you'll be able to hold that space as you deal with the people within your life. And maybe you can help transform the, um, the experience of what it is that's uh, happening for them. And at this point, I've been told sentence. So I'll take a, a short time to speak about this because 
there's, there's so many things I could, I could take you down um, within um, the process, but this one's really uh, important uh, because the sooner or later we're going to be we're faced with with a um, a lot of fear. I fear. <laughs> um, so this, I would like to take some time to speak about the sentient person of the house. And it's not necessarily the uh, alpha male, like uh, the person in charge. It is the peacekeeper. It is the um, peacemaker. It is the calm energy that re represents um, the people within the house because we are a step above the animal kingdom because we have this ability to um with a higher brain function and um spiritual um sentiments and the ability to choose blah 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 uh, we are the guardians of um, Mother Earth and every, it, literally everything around us. That includes the plants, the animals. Um, there, there are studies. I'm not an empirical type of guy. I'm, I'm a lived experience uh, talker. Uh, if you if you need the empirical stuff, it's out there. Um, so, oh, Dr. Emoto, there's there's one that I I could speak to. Um, so the sentiments of water. So you might have heard about the experiments that uh, take place and he, and he has water or he examines crystals and stuff and he speaks love to, to one crystal, water that turns into a crystal and has a um, snowflake, has a beautiful structure. And uh, he says uh, negative stuff to, a, to another one and it has a deformed structure. So there are studies that have gone not only into that, but into how plants are connected um, when they don't even have to be within the, the same root system or, or next to each other or anything like that. You could have a household plant uh, in the room and if the sentient person in the house is upset or hurt, physically hurt, then science has uh, shown that there's an actual instant result within um, the plant. The plant feels what's going on. And this, I've noticed this within my own life because one of my daughters generally, I think, is is much more sentient than than I am. She's got such a way with nature, um, and she kind of always has. I showed her a little bit, but uh, even from the youngest age, they used to uh, catch lizards. Um, with we and train them. Like she she will have a lizard for the best part of the day, just hanging out and sitting in the palm of her hand and being quite chilled and, and relaxed. Uh, we've got photos of them. We've got photos of um, grasshoppers that we've trained, and they've also hung out with me um, for the day. You know, we put them back in their tree, um, but they they hang out and they don't want to get away. Um, the the recent experience that I found where she would potentially be holding that that sentence value of um, that household experience that I'm, I'm going to get to the point with is um, we helped a wasp re recently. There was a wasp on the ground and, and he was uh, literally on his last legs. He, he, was, he was going down the, the other, other end of the slope um, and the daughters come in and said um, that there's, there's a bee they think um, needs, needs saving because we saved quite a few bees. Um, so I, I instantly got a little drop of honey on a little bit of plastic 
and I saw straight away that it was a wasp and and I told them it was a wasp and then their fear shot up. So from that point, I was a sentient person. Uh, I literally put my hand down um, in front of it and it crawled over and literally crawled onto my hand. And then I placed a little, a little drop of honey in front of him because uh, wasps attack bees <laughs> and um, a, a fan of honey. So he had some honey. Um, he hung out for a little while. Um, he took off for a bit and then it, fear shot up with, with the girls. You know, a wasp is flying. I said, yeah, but you're not his food. He's not looking to harm you. We, we're, we're saving him. So we picked him up again. Uh, both my girls got to uh, get over a little bit of an aspect fear because I let them let him crawl, him, her, whatever the wasp was, uh, from my hand to to their hand. So they got the hold of a wasp. <laughs> and then uh, we put him in the tree because it looked like one of his wings weren't uh, formed well. And he could have been um, a baby where his, his wing hasn't uh, formed properly. So we put him out in the sun. But that's, that's a bit of an example of how, how the, the sentience can change. Um, and what apparently happens within this scientific stuff is everything that's connected um, to uh, the household and, and sentient people within the household um, go from the most sentient to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So um, if that was an experiment as, as it was conducted, there wouldn't have been any actual effect within the plants because it would have shifted between me and my daughter. Um, apparently when, when there's no human around, the sentient person, a uh, sentient being, is uh, then like a household dog, cat. I've got a bird, but I, I haven't, haven't heard of study with, with a bird. Um, but here's the thing, it, they don't need to be connected. So, and this is, this is how it relates to fear. So the more that we can be aligned with, um, you need to be knowing of the fear that goes on and knowing that there, there's only one thing that we control, we can only ever control ourselves. And that's the perfect viewpoint. Uh, we can hold space for our, others. We can be there for them when that, within the analogy, if they trip over and graze their knee, uh, we can be there to pick them up, but we can't stop them from tripping over. Um, that's, that's universal guidance. Now, um, like I'm saying, uh, the difficult part with all this kind of information is that it's only a thought form experiment. Uh, to be able to relate this to real life is, is the trickiest, trickiest part. So this is just an idea to, to dig into the situations that surround your life and to um, see what kind of value you can get out of those kind of things um, for yourself. You, know, you have the free will to choose above all or to not choose at all, that, that's the choice. Um, your life could change or you don't need to change. You take what resonates, you leave the rest. If, if, if this doesn't resonate, that's fine. God bless. Um, I wish everyone well on their journey. I've got a different way of uh, speaking to the information than most people, I understand that. Um, so, now to the to the, the quick offer as as we're getting down to the last uh, fifteen odd minute, minutes. Within my next, well, we'll go back to what's happening with with my direction in life. Um, I could have continued on that from from the start. Um, so it, my transformational experience began as a writer. Um, 
didn't really heed the call, but it was, it was transformational anyway. I was able to work out what was going on by putting it down on paper for myself um, in, in many different forms. I've got 10 rhyming stories, rhyming kids stories. I've got tons and tons of poetry that it's got a negative context and, and hurt themes. <laughs> um, I want to write something beautiful. Actually, in, in the next book, The Alchemy of Soul's Journey, there is um, a, a, poet, a poem called I Am the Light That Believes. Um, and this is the offer. Uh, because I'm not good with um, technology um, and this next book is going to be, I've been shown like a tool or a resource for someone to use as they're coming to me on, for one-on-one -on -one help. The, um, what I need help with and, and would be asking for is if people could send me their detail, or not details, I don't want to know your address or phone number or anything like that. Uh, I need a, uh, a name, like a first name. It doesn't even have to be a real name, just a way to, to relate to you and an email. Um, because my, uh, what do you call that? Um, my grasp of technology is extremely poor. <laughs> um, I'm literally going to write down on a pen and paper people's name and email address so that I can um, send you a little in invite for when I get to the stage where, you know, I'm trying to uh, launch the, the first Kindle cheap ebook. And the the offer is if you can send me a snapshot of uh, a promotion on, on your Facebook and a purchase of, of the ebook, I'll let you into the invitation only uh, video guidance that will set the scene right from the, the word go, where I think most people could, could and should start. Um, the, the difficulty when um, trying to help people within the framework that I'm delivering is everyone is on a multi-dimensional level or dot point in the universe and everyone is also transversing a different path. So you've got little lines going left, right and centre all over the place and a straight up um, do this, do this, do this, do this is never ever going to work um, effectively for someone who's trying to find their own way. So that's that's what the book's about. Um, there's there's very little personal stories. There's there's a lot more of these uh, analogies and thought form experiments that um, I give you, and I give you some of some of the basics not some of the basics, I give you all the basics that I, I know to be true after the lived experience of learning life from the hard way. <laughs> um, so you'll, you'll get early access to that. So whilst reading the ebook, um, for example, there's a exercise that I get the reader to do is to do after I've laid out some information, get the reader to do a uh, analysis of their life for, for a period of about a month. And th there's really deep meanings why you should take the time to elicit whatever information is, is in that container or package that is at least within a, with a month because from that space, you'll be able to work out, you know, how to um, get onto your individual soul guidance within the framework of ease and grace instead of um, trial and error and um, going the hard road and getting smashed by um, the universe. Because when you really start looking into 
these like to shift your own consciousness um, to be a better person. At first, it, you're, it, I say to people, it's like you're running a double mission. Not only are you uh, learning and releasing like uh, negative and positive karma events. Um, I'll just got to skip over that because I could talk talk for about an hour on that. <laughs> um, negative and positive karmic events um, both have lessons for you. Both are as valuable for you. There, there is. Um, gold nuggets in each each one of them um, but you can also um, set the intention um, within the framework that you find uh, within that month's experience of um, of like Tash said actually in her in the live that was just previous to mine um, there's like a, a, that little golden thread. There's the reason why these things are happening to us. And I also believe that there's not just one destined path we can take. We, we could potentially take a few that are aligned with uh, what it is that we're here to do, but it all depends on uh, the soul's mission as they incarnate um, from source to come to here to do the things that they need to do. Um, that provides as such a little trajectory and it's vitally important to spend that time when you when you got this information to do a little self-analysis so before we go marching down the road of um, self-improvement we're stepping off with the right foot in the right direction and as I say that I need to also mention um, be aware and please be kind to yourself because every choice in every direction, every decision is the right decision. Even if, um, even if traumatic things happen and, and you don't necessarily see the lesson in, in the moment at the time, uh, you, you'll see why later on as you go on with life. Um, sometimes it takes a while to... Um, be able to come to that space where the heart and mind and the souls aligned with uh, um, being okay with the traumatic experiences as they transpired. Um, you, you'll, you'll see if you haven't already. Okay. Um, oh. We've got a little bit of time. Have we got anything else just about sign off? So that's that's the um, offer. Uh, just, I'm not necessarily um, aligned with the need or the want to go out there and be there visibly because unfortunately for the little part of the letdown and full disclosure for me to you, um, I've been shown a little bit of a different way. It, it won't be me promoting this um, book and trying to force my message out there and send that. I, I don't don't need to do that. It, it's an evolution of my soul direction to put this information out there, and I see it as a resource for for my next step that I'm keeping close to my heart for for a little bit longer as it uh, finishes up its manifestations. I was hoping by this stage that it would be complete, but the universe has said it's not complete. There are a few more things that need to happen. So full disclosure, that's, that's where it is. Um, I'm not necessarily indifferent to um, how it goes. <laughs> Um, I wish for things to happen in the best way, obviously. Um, but what I'm saying is I accept my journey and I know to follow uh, the guidance because um, that's my life experience. I'd like for everyone to even to see what it is that I see. Um, because even if you follow it just, just, a, just a little bit, uh, the effects are going to be profound. Uh, there's so much growth to be had 
And yes, um, thank you, um, guides. <laughs> what I want to say after dropping all of that information is, is not, it's a thought form experiment and nothing more. Uh, the reality of the 3D perspective in which we live in is we are guided, we are supported, we are connected, um, not only um, to other people, but so many things around us, including the earth and literally the entire universe itself. Um, these things can only get a hold of us if we, if we let them get a hold of us. And the universe, your guides will be showing you the way the whole time. It's not gonna be uh, difficult. You're not gonna be over bombarded in real 3D life. What will happen is um, an event will transpire. Uh, it will flag for you a moment in time where you learnt some uh, lesson, mentally or physically. And within that flash of that thought is, is that universal uh, universe experience just raising a little flag for you to go, there's a choice here. What is it that you want to choose? Do you want to, do you want to try something different? Um, and again, any choice is the right choice because whatever happens, you, you will learn your lessons from. I take people on, on a much more elaborate um, thought form experience uh, experiment about um, how to um, delve in deeper towards those things to help the reader understand the dynamics that they don't have to go a, a hard way. There, there's, there's easier versions, there is easier ways, but above all, you are loved, you are guided. It won't be any more difficult than making a decision within the time. And um, with a few minutes that I've got left, I'll give you my experience of, yeah, we'll do that. Um, so um, for whatever reason, and, and part of my um, need to be, more professional and, and tech. <laughs> um, I put down that I was going to, in the summit, if, if anyone's noticed, that I was going to do this talk uh, yesterday because I mistakenly wrote it on the wrong page in my diary. I wrote it in Monday instead of Tuesday. Um, but as the Actually, as I was going to bed Sunday night, thinking that it's going to happen Monday, um, not ha having the time to check in because I'm busy with a universal direction, um, it was telling me something's wrong, something's wrong, and I'm trying to find out what, what that thing is, when something's wrong. Um, it was, I wasn't able to get the information, but I woke up Monday morning, and there it was, got the wrong day, so wrote down edit. Um, Sorry, and then I realized I could restructure my day on Monday. It was absolutely perfect um, because I went out and did some stuff. I got home um, with perfect time because I'd set the washing machine, hung the washing out, uh, literally just finished that um, off to the physio appointment, back from the physio appointment, and just things just lined up and went bang, 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 bang helping a couple of people out on, on um, messenger talks and I was spending money and money was coming straight back um, to me from, from family. Uh, that, was, that was amazing. Um, and that wouldn't have happened that way. I wouldn't have planned things that way if I hadn't have made the mistake. And the, the next benefit was that um, I got time to sort out my computer issues because I've got an internet problem from a guy that's literally been here uh, this morning. So yesterday I was able to actually book and get a guy uh, the very next day to come in, uh, fix up my internet issue. Um, and he has. So that's, that's how the universe will work for you. And um, 
just a little bit of an example of how things can go wrong for the very right reasons. I've got so many more of them, but I need to leave it there. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. I'm uh, wishing all of you the very, very best from, from me to you. Uh, love and life to you. And yeah, enjoy the summit. Yeah. Bear with me while I know how to turn this off. I'm finished. <laughs> you don't have to be here. So that's the Facebook one. That's... Oh, down here. See how bad I am with tech. <laughs> all right, I got it. Uh, big love to all of you. Uh, catch you later.